Hello, 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 and welcome to the show. It's Wrestling Wit Entertainment, bringing you the latest exclusive breaking news, previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AEW, New Japan, and everything in between. Every Saturday on YouTube and Castbox, I am your host, James J, starring Coleco Yachts. I have been to the tree of Joshua and I have seen my vision of wrestling for the rest of the year. And I must say, we are back. We're starting to go back to the promised land of wrestling. What yeah. is going on, my people? Really? I thought you were in a scooter's basement. Ah! He goes dead. He's locked in my basement. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Nah, because you know he wouldn't let me out if I if I didn't say shit about Vince McMahon. <laughs> and of course, Scooter Dust. Like a scrotum, here it is in a nutshell. And it's not a great day for wrestling. Uh, earlier this week, we lost a true legend. Uh, Kamala died uh, at seventy years old. And um, I want to make I, I want to make this clear because a, a a certain somebody who is not here stupidly thought, oh, Kamala Harris died. Yeah, not to be confused with the United States <laughs> Senator, oh my God, who is the no. vice presidential nominee. Seriously, because when someone said that, people actually thought it was Kamala Harris, the actual senator. So, and they were, and this per when I told this person, I said Kamala died, and they they were so happy. And but the president, the presidential, oh. Vice President elected. Yeah, yeah not right. the not the nominee, a, the AKA Kamala Harris, <laughs> Jim Kamala Harris. <laughs> there you go. Are we sure there's no relations there? No. <laughs> <laughs> no relations, because no. he's from the South South. She's from Oakland, California. It could be two totally different people. You know, I, I was just thinking that we were gonna have like a touchy moment about Kamala, <laughs> and we could come Ka Kamala. The utter craziness. Um, hey man, you'd be surprised because someone was like trending, the world trending, Kamala Harris because she made history, and then wrestling trending. Kamala Harris. So that's why it's like, yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. Kaliko, could you maybe talk a little bit about Kamala, the wrestler? I can say this because me being from the South, I got to see him in those territories, which was like the USWA mainly. So he was working with the Jarrett's and the in Lawler. So to me, I have like a little extensive history, and that dude was the man, the villain in the South. Like when you think of Mid South wrestling, especially in Memphis, when it comes to heels, uh, it's it's a short list of people who could get like a reaction. Uh, the Moon Dogs were one of them, and. This guy, Kamala, not Kamala, Kamala was the other one. And he was a former unified champion in the USWA circuit. So it's not like his, uh, he was just like this jobber who, you know, because he's not really known more so. He's more known in WWE as being the guy that kind of got beat by Taker and kind of got, like, never got the best of certain feuds. But I feel like his best work was in the territory days because they made him look unstoppable at times. Um, so I, I feel like 
with hopefully of WWE, get, I think they will be getting, uh, if they haven't already gotten it, the Mid-South tapes. I feel like that's where his work would be, where like the shine would really, really stick out. Because I feel like WWE, he was kind of like in that flux when they were in the golden era, and then they were kind of trying to flip to the new generation era. So he never really got a, a break break, if that makes sense. Uh, but overall, his career has been, you know, pretty solid. I, I hate that, like, he ended up being poor and he had diabetes and he had to get leg cut off and, and, and all the subsequent stuff that happened after. But in his prime, he was a draw in the Mid-South area. Anything you want to add to that, Scooter? Well, I mean, Kamala was one of one of those talents, you know, that was working with the WWF, WWE in the, in the you know, mid to late eighties. Uh, had was working main event programs with Andre and you know and and uh, and not, not Hogan, necessarily yeah. Yeah, Hogan but uh, but he or what I like to say suffered the the the, uh, the Bam Bam Bigelow effect because Kamala, you know, shows up at one pay-per-view in 1987, 88, and, you know, just, just like Bigelow, who was at too, and then goes down to, uh, you know, the U- USWA and, you know, spends most of his time there. It, there was, there was some brief time, I believe, in the UWF with uh, Bill Watts, and then you know Kamala comes back as you know the the, the Ugandan giant, and got I mean he got shoehorned into a comedy act. It was you know, the guy that. If you were a new generation fan, you, you remember Kamala as a guy who can never cover a person properly. A guy who would have so many wins out during his victory if you could pin your opponent on his stomach. And and then I mean Kamala made the gimmick work. He was hilarious, and then his face turn came in you know the in in ninety three, and his uh, you know, one of one of his last WWF matches before uh, his time in WCW uh, was I believe was I believe against Papa Shango. Coincidentally, we saw Papa Shango's technically last match before, you know, he would become something else altogether. I think it was uh, uh, Mustafa. Kama Mustafa. Kama Mustafa. Kama, Mustafa. Kama the and, and then, of course, Kamala ends up showing up in WCW in 95 as part of the Dungeon of Doom. Uh, mostly because of Hulk Hogan. Um, again, Kamala really, I mean, aside, aside from the territory work, as Kaliko already mentioned, Kamala really didn't have any real mainstream career achievements. In fact, his, his, I think his 
only mainstream title match was on Monday Night Raw against Shawn Michaels for the Intercontinental title in 93. And possibly there may have been a WWF Championship match against Yokozuna, which was uh, you know, interesting enough to say the least. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> But it's still, I think he he's did um, a bit of an impact. I mean, if he didn't, we wouldn't be talking about him right now. Oh, I'm not denying he made an impact. It's he, he just uh, it's more territorial impact. Yeah, and he's more one of those superstars that unfortunately got forgotten. Yes. You know, yeah, to a degree. Kind of like him and Junkyard Dog. Yes, like if they were uh, like really like allowed to work how they, you know, how they actually could, then, you know, th things would probably have been a whole lot different. And uh, Chris Jericho, uh, you know, a heel on TV, but a great guy in uh, real life uh, paid for the funeral uh, for him. Um, not, not if, not if you see what the people were talking about him at Sturgis, but that's a whole other topic. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other day. But, but yeah, that's why I was. But back to the Kamala. That's why I, I would hope that the the USWA tapes would get bought some time by the WWE Network because I feel like a lot of the unsung heroes of that that USWA because it used to be a training circuit for the WWF uh, so to me I feel like that would show more of his shine and, and a lot of other wrestlers who were probably bigger in those USWA days um I think slow, slowly but surely we're getting there with the old uh, tapes. You know, we just got yeah. Evolve Wrestling. Uh, WWE. And, and, and in progress. In progress. WFW. Yeah. Yeah, the so, progress, though, I'm looking for. Oh. So sl slowly but surely, WWE is taking over the wrestling world. <laughs> Honestly, and, and as much as people can say sh like bad shit about that, like, to me, I feel like they're preserving a lot of the history because they easily could have been like, fuck it, it's WWE or nothing. They easily could have been like, we're not recognizing any of these motherfuckers or recognizing any of the work that they did prior. So to me, by, by turning, by, by buying these, these, these tapes and, and the history, it almost feels like they're a fucking music uh, video museum, in a sense. It's, a, it's and, almost and, like they're humbling themselves. Yeah. Like yeah. wrestling blockbuster. I, yeah, you can make it that way, but I feel <laughs> like that they're preserving wrestling, period, in the United States. Because a lot of this stuff is going to be hard to find. They found the fucking Battle of Atlanta. The, the so that tape was so hard to find, man. I'm telling you. So, and that was like the holy grail of like wrestling tapes. Like wow. very few people had it. And aside from the uh, the, the match between Bret Hart and Tom McGee. Oh yes. Yes. That's... <laughs> yes, that, was yes. The holy grail, that was the arc of the covenant. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, but you know the WWE was sitting on that tape for so many years. I don't think they yeah, were yeah. sitting on it. I think they lost it. And WWE didn't actually have it. Bret Hart actually had it. Bret Hart seems like he keeps, like, his wrestling trunks from 1984. I mean, so, yeah. They, I mean, they did, have, they, they, did, they did have another match between McGee, McGee and DiBiase. Which I think McGee actually won. True, but that wasn't the match that people were talking about. They were talking about yeah. the, 
the Bret Hart one. Yeah, the yeah. Bret Hart and McGee one, and for rest for the Southern wrestling circuit, it was that that last battle of Atlanta. Yep, steel cage match. That was like the South's wrestling holy grail tape. So, I mean, uh, the Kamala, uh, Art Dots and Perez go out to his family. And moving on to uh, a better bit, uh, bit of news this week, uh, MVP signed a multi-year deal with WWE. It's funny how, you know, earlier this year he had no employment from WWE, and now he's signing a multiple-year deal with them. Uh, Scooter, your thoughts? Uh, I mean, quite honestly, is the MVP the person they want to invest in with a long-term deal in, like, in, th- in th- this in situation? Now, just because it's a long-term deal doesn't exactly mean it's, you know, like, the richest deal. Um, but, you know, MVP probably after watching his Vice special, you know, realize, hey, I, I'm not going to, you know, pass this up again. And, uh, you know, did, did the smart thing. I mean, at, the, at this point, MVP is not going to be a world champion. He, he probably won't even be a real mid-card champion. In fact, when MVP really came back, most people really like, expected him to be like more of a managerial role. And that's probably something he could do really well. So, I hope we see more from MVP, but I'm kind of hoping his time in the ring winds down. Him as the mouthpiece for a stable, like he is with the Hurt Business, suits him to a T. I couldn't agree more with you, Scooter. What about you, Coleco? That's what I was going to say. I think that (laughs) long-term deal is, is just indicative of the solid... I mean, whether we it's all based on whatever, but he busted his ass off to me. I feel like he and, – and it made sense for him to go against Apollo because you didn't want to give another loss to Bobby. Um, so he is perfect for those when protecting other people from getting losses. He can, you know, jump in the ring and take it because no one's really expecting – a win from MVP, like Scooter just mentioned. Uh, like but, the Bushi yeah, of mouth- LIJ. What was that? The, like the Bushi of LIJ. And, yes, kind of, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, kind of like Bushi and LIJ. Uh, you're not ex- – anything that you get from him as far as, like, wrestling is – actual wrestling to me is a bonus because he's mo- mainly there for to be the mouthpiece and to – be in a managerial position and to push a lot of these guys who may not be the best on the mic, but to speak on their behalf and make and and hype them up. He's like, he's he's a, he's a hype man. I mean, as much as, you know, everyone was bitching about Lashley losing the belt or losing the Drew, you really, you know, nothing got taken away from, from Lashley because of MVP being there, hyping him up and so on and so forth. Cause I feel like Lashley does better when he has someone not saying that Lashley can't speak, but I feel like someone who can actually hype him up as kind of like a, a Brock Lesnar ish type of, of, of hype man. So MVP is perfectly suited for that. He's perfectly suited to get younger guys uh, over like the, like the Mustafas, like the Cedrics, like the Ricochets, and, and get those guys, you know, rubbed because at the end of the day, he could take the beating to put those smiles on the kids' faces, as they say. Um, 
bizarre yeah. news also. Um, Eric Redbeard, formerly Eric Rowan, uh, did an interview uh-huh. earlier this week, um, and he discussed what was going to be in the cage. If you uh, seem to remember, uh-huh. it was a spider. Um, a- 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 and oh God, yeah. he had su- he had suggested that the thing to actually be in the cage was actress, and I'm going to butcher this name completely, Jayoti Amorge from America Horror Stories, which is, who is a two feet, one inch grown adult woman, to be in the cage. And he was going to shelter her from the horrors of the world. Hindsight being yep. 2020, uh, Scooter, the, the spider was the right way to go, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Trey uh, if you've, you know, seen American Horror Story Freak Show, that's uh-huh. the, the season that they are referring to, she is... Only eleven pounds and stands at two feet tall. Yeah. Now, I didn't think that cage was, you know, two feet, you know, long. Yeah. Uh, not to mention she's also of um, she's also of Indian descent. So, if this had come to pass, we probably would have seen a much earlier social justice uprising. Uh, and another, that's another reason not to, not to put a little person in a cage. <laughs> yeah, it just... It's, yeah, 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 this is just one of those stories where you're just like... Yeah. What point did you think this would be a decent idea? And I think that kind of speaks to Eric Redbeard's, you know, why they didn't go with that guy. What about you, Coleco? Your thoughts on a little person in a cage? <laughs> Bro, we in 2020. Rick and Morty just got canceled. You'd think they wouldn't have canceled his ass so fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but, they, but they're releasing like little new like anime, like short clips and for Rick and Morty. So, and the most recent one actually proves the theory that Morty is in fact a grown up Rick. Uh, Rick is in fact a grown up Morty. Mm-hmm. Hey, but that's just a theory. A film theory. Matt Pat, don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, next on the bracket, Mickey James uh, return. I didn't even realize that she was still employed by WWE. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, she is. What one... They made a. Didn't they make some big fuss about her finally retiring? And two, wasn't she pregnant again? No, but no, she was so. injured. Yeah, and more than. I could have sworn we were talking about her being pregnant again. Yeah, oh no, that was when she was pregnant and she was wanting to get you know, she wanted to be Missy Elliott and get her freak on. Yeah. <laughs> Which you gotta um, love. Um, what? What does it speak about Mickey James that you know when this pandemic, a lot of people got furloughed, but they keep her on the payroll. They have to see something in her, right, Scooter? They probably want to put her in. In charge of uh, probably the trainer. You think that she would do well in that um, that role? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. 
uh, uh, I mean, along uh, with her and um, uh, what's her name, Sarah Del Rey. Yeah. Or yeah. Was she from? Yeah. Her, her, and uh, Sarah Del Rey teaching the uh, WWE Women's Division is that 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 that's absolute gold right there. What about you, Kalika? What are your thoughts? Well, to me, Mickey is one of those. Very, 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 very beautiful women. Uh, oh, she could do knows. no wrong in my eyes. She could do. She could do no <laughs> wrong in my eyes. That good, yo, I hey shit. But okay. to see her come back and like fight Natalia, who's kind of going through a, I'm not gonna say identity crisis, but they're just trying to figure out what to do with her because she's kind of like a solid aunt, and for her to get the whatever she's doing off the ground, that's not the worst thing that could happen. You know, everybody else is kind of in their own little stories, if that makes sense. So to get someone who, well, if they take the L, it's not going to, no one's going to yell, Mickey James deserves better. So I get the point that they're doing using with her. And she's, she serves well for that role. Nothing wrong with that at all. And plus, it's Mickey, man. More Mickey is all good with me. I think you might be a little biased, though. Um, Not biased, <laughs> just a realist. Um, NXT will be doing a takeover in October, and it's rumored that it's going to be Halloween Havoc theme. Uh, you know, with the Great American Bass and the In Your House themes coming back. Is there a really I good mean, opportunity? Is there a really good chance that this actually happens? I if they if if they bring back like the pump the giant pumpkin with the entrance way and Slim Jims, yeah, it could and, work. And and that giant uh, like Atlas like guy, you know, above with like his hands on, you know. No oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, if they bring that back, and since they're moving all that shit to Amway Center anyway, they have a shot at it. And since apparently they are stealing my idea, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that they stole it. They just listened to you and said, "Hey, yeah. hey, I, I take it. I take it as a compliment." Yeah, I'm just waiting for the the guy on the uh, who are watching the shows, and you see them on the screen, but they're not wearing any pants, and God knows what they're doing underneath their desks. <laughs> oh, especially when Alexa Bliss comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I don't even want to go there. Let's just Hall next topic. <laughs> Can we go Halloween Havoc. Good thing, bad thing, coming back. I mean, it's a good thing because they're trying to... It's kind of... They can only do so much with TakeOver, right? So... Especially it's, since it's, there's, no, there's no traveling. Well, not even that. I'm just saying, like, with the TakeOver names, the, the names of the way that they were named. Because you remember they used to be, like, TakeOver Revolution, TakeOver blah, 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 blah. So it's just more like trying to extend that TakeOver brand, per se. And I could see them doing something where it's, like, TakeOver Great American Bash is something every year or TakeOver Halloween Havoc is something every year. Um they already did it with war games, so it's not like it's out of the realm. You know what I mean? That's true. Oh well, it, it, I mean, it could be worse. It could be, you know, instead of Halloween Havoc theme, it could be Jimmy Havoc theme. <laughs> true. Yep. Or uh, what was it? The uh, the the what was the one they called it? Something Stampede, the Road Stampede. I can't Canadian even remember. Spring Stampede. Spring Stampede. Yes, there you go. Spring Stampede. Stampede. Uh, good news and bad news. Sachi Blackheart got her car stolen earlier this week. Uh, but uh -oh. it, it was soon returned, uh, later in the week. So, good news for her. Any comments? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, got a car, got a car stolen. <laughs> well, I mean, also Gil was in there. 
all her, her boots, her ring gear, her helmets, her ring jackets. So it wasn't like just her car. I found it interesting. Alright, um, well, something that's definitely controversial this week, Velveteen Dream Man has returned to TV. Um, so, you know, some people are calling for him to get fired, and they're putting him in a prominent role. Um, not the best move by NXT, Scooter? I mean, you don't... I mean, with the, this is a very yes. <laughs> un, 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 like yeah, like I don't. I mean, the accusations aren't exactly credible. I mean, of course, then his uh, the, the accuser speaks out again as soon as he appears back on television. Which kind of, which is a little odd to me. Um, it's just, I, I don't know what to think about this anymore. It's definitely an interesting little development that, you know, there's no, you know, there's been repercussions for everybody else that had allegations. And it kind of seems like Velveteen Dream gets uh, preferred treatment and no no backlash from it. I mean, it's not to say that he didn't get backlash. Maybe because we didn't see it in the form of a firing does not mean that he did not receive it. Does that make sense? And plus, I feel like Velveteen is one of those guys... I feel like Sean, Sean vouches for, for Velveteen. And I feel like the fact that all these other wrestlers kind of gave credence to Velveteen before all this popped off, and the fact that he became a draw, it, it, it feels like the, uh, the Triple H 90 set, the Triple H curtain call treatment, where, like, he's... He's there, but we don't, you know, he might be getting punished behind the scenes. And that's, you know, and that's all, all I can say about it, because I'm not really going to go into whether okay. it's credible or not. That's not, you know, up yeah. for us to decide. No. But when it comes to the to the wrestling aspect, we can only just go off, just think that, he wouldn't be back on TV if some shit hadn't got dealt with. That's a fair assessment. Um, shit that didn't get dealt with. Uh, AEW releases Jimmy Havoc, uh, B. Presley, and City Gibbs uh, a couple days ago. Uh, kind of sucks for these three people. I don't remember City Gibbs being in anything of this Me uh, Too movement. I don't even remember City Gibbs being on AEW TV. Uh, the 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 B Priestley's release and get Sadie's release has nothing to do with Jimmy Havoc's release per se. Okay. Oh, I was well, gonna say it's a budget thing. <laughs> well, no. It, you know, B. Priestley was involved in um, the Will Osprey controversy, so I could I understand, and you know she's not actually there; she's in the UK, so she can't actually do so. So I, I understand yeah, that. Yeah, she it ain't like she could get there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you? What are your thoughts on these three people getting released from AEW, Scooter? Well, no big loss for, with Priestley and Gibbs. Havoc, though, it seemed like AEW was was going to maybe try and push him. Almost like he was going to... 
thinking he was going to be in the role that Darby Allen's in right now. Like, he, he, like, imagine what Darby Allen's been doing, only a lot more hardcore, and that's, you know, Jimmy Havoc. And what, uh, what Jimmy Havoc would be that's doing. That's a little bit debatable. I, you know, uh, Darby's on the younger side, but I did see, you know, Jimmy Havoc having a prominent role in AEW. He could have been in that second position on the card, you know, the the TNT championship. The only reason I can't say that because the way that they're running the TNT championship, it feels it doesn't feel like there's a ranking system to it. You know what I mean? Right. All the other ones have a ranking system. I the TNT that there's a ranking one system to it, but No, no, I'm saying like it it would it would pretty much be a one off match because I can't it's not like people are going, Oh yeah, in a long term feud for the TNT championship, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's not it, it's not like it, it it seems more like the WCW television title more so than the AEW championship. At least to me. Do you think, uh, you know, uh, Jerry Havoc started with a indefinite uh, suspension uh, that was on the same t- the, around the same time Sammy Guevara got a suspension, um, and now he just got fired. Do you think that this may have been a slight overreaction, maybe pure pressure, or do you think that? it was the right move to make. Uh, honestly, I feel like AEW, when it comes to that shit, they're hypocritical. I can't even, and, 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 and the reason I say that is because they set the bar so high. They made it seem like, yo, this shit ain't happening. And now when it's their guys, it's like, oh, it's murky. So you can't sit there and say you start that shit like that and then and then you fall down. You see what I'm saying? They right. should have been like, yo, it's case by case basis from the beginning. But when they did the whole we cutting Hogan off, we cutting um um Hogan's wife off, they gave the impression that it's zero tolerance to me. And 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 that's to me. It could be anyone else. But to me, when you're saying that off the rip for people who ain't even in the company, that t- that to me tells me that people are in the company should be held to even a higher standard because they're not even... You see what I'm saying? Right. So that's where they lost all kind of credibility with me when they're handling these situations. Granted, okay. yet, granted, I, I see some of the shit may not be a big deal. Some are more serious than others. But but for Tony Khan to go off the gun like that, kind of like how Roger Goodell did with the NFL, just for like comparison, where he was just like, no nonsense, we're hammering, we're hammering, we're hammering, we're hammering. But now when you see it, it trickles down, it fucks with your credibility. And that's, that's what I feel like. And then you want to add to that, Scooter? No, I think that was uh, <laughs> well said. All right, and that will conclude the news this week.